that is great for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, I am really glad to be here. And so the title of my talk will be The Gangos Passat Conjecture. I will explain what it is. And related, local related phrase formulas. So let me start with some generalities. So let G be a locally compact group and H a closed subgroup of it. And I will assume that both groups are unimodulo, which means that they have a measure uh, which are left and right invariant in the installation. And if we fix such measures, then by taking the quotient, we get a measure on the quotient space G over H. I will denote by X, which is G invariant and uh, unique up to a scalar. And so we can speak of the L2 space of X, and we have a natural action of G on that space, which is given by a right translation. And in fact, it is a unitary representation of G, I denote by R. And I want to speak about two main problems about such representation. The first one will be to decompose, in some sense, as precisely as possible, the space L2 of X in terms of irreducible unitary representations of G. So I denote by G hat this set of representations takes them up to isomorphism. It's called the unitary dual of G. And try to write down in for such a representation a phrase formula. I will explain what it is. But let me first give an example. So the example is when G is compact. In this case, you have a decomposition, discrete decomposition of L2 of X in terms of irreducible representation of G. So you have a Nilbert direct sum indexed by the pi in the unitary dual of G of m pi copies of pi. So here m pi is a non-negative integer. And so I want to give a more specific example because we will meet it again when speaking about the Arthur's local trace formula. It is the example where G is uh, the product of two copies of H. And H is sitting into this product by means of the diagonal embedding. And in this case, <coughs> X is just H with direction of H times H given by left and right translation, respectively. And in this case, the decomposition is given by the classical Peter Weyl theorem, saying that the L2 space of H is isomorphic as an H times H representation to the Hilbert direct sum of a representation in the unitary dual of H this time, so of representations of H times H that can be written as a tensor product of representations of H one will be tau, and the other one will be tau chech, which is the dual representations of tau. That is to say, the natural action of H on the dual space of tau. And so let me uh, come back to the general case where G is compact. And so you have such decomposition is answer in some sense the first question. And then to get the trace formula, we have to let act function f, which is continuous and complex valued on G, on the space L2 of x by the following formula. So R of f is just the integral over G of f of G times R of G dg. And in fact, this operator is a kernel operator, meaning that if you take R of phi evaluate and you evaluate that at x, then it is the integral over x of some functions of two variables, the kernel, kf of x, y against phi, y, dy. And the kernel is given by the following formula. And what, in many cases, in fact, for example, if g is a D group and f is smooth, then r of f is of trace class, which means that it has a trace, and we can compute the trace by taking the integral over the diagonal of the kernel. And we can easily, by just switching two integrals, write differently the right-hand side as an integral over the space of conjugacy classes in H of something called orbital integral, IHF. So this is the 
this is just the integral of f over the orbit of h on the uh, conjugation. So yeah, gh is the centralizer of h in g. And there is another way for computing the trace of r of f by using the decomposition of L2 of x in terms of irreducible representations. And it gives that the trace of R of f is the sum over the pi in the unitary dual of g of the multiplicity m of pi times the trace of pi of f. And by equating the two ways to compute the trace of R of f, you get a trace formula, which is the following. And you see that it's a, the pattern we will see in other trace formulas is that on the left-hand side, you have something geometric, meaning that it involves orbital integrals. And the, on the right-hand side, you have something spectral, meaning that it involves a uh, trace of representations. So now I would be interested in group G that in general are non-compact. So in this case, in general, R of F is not traceless. And so what we have done can be done just the same way. And then Arthur's idea for his local trace formula was to consider some sort of truncated trace. So GT of F, it will be just the integral of the kernel over the diagonal, but this time against some characteristic function of a compact subset of X, depending on the parameter T, such that uh, omega T is going to cover <coughs> all of x as t is going to infinity. So, so I don't say where t is li living, but it's the ID. So for some well-chosen characteristic function, we can then try to evaluate this truncate trace as t goes to infinity as before in two different ways. So one will be geometric and the other one will be spectral. So here is Arthur's local trace formula. So it was the case where Arthur's apply his ID of truncate trace. So it's about periodic groups where you have to fix F, a finite extension of QP, the field of periodic numbers. So QP, it's a, a topological field which is complex with respect to some absolute value and locally compact. And I am going to take H to be a connected semi-simple group over F so you can think that H can be, for example, SLN or PGLN, or a special orthogonal group. And I would be interested in the F points of such a group. And it's a local, locally profiled group. So in particular, it's locally compact. And Arthur's look at the case where G, as before, is H times H. And H is sitting in the product diagonally. Then for the decompositions of the L2 space of H is given by a theorem of Arishandra. It says that as before, you have a decompositions where only representations of the form tau tensor tau chech appears. But this, this, this time, you don't have a direct sum, but instead some sort of direct integral. And also, uh, an important point is that not all the unitary dual is appearing here, but only a part of it, which is called uh, the set of tempered representations. And I denote it by temp of H. Then starting from here, Arthur was able to achieve his program and get some sort of local trace formula for this embedding, which is the following. So I take F to be a continuous function of, of G. I assume it to be compactly spotted and smooth in the, sense of is in the sense of profinite group, which means that it's compactly spotted, uh, it's, uh, sorry, locally constant, and which is cuspidal, I will explain what it means. Then we have the following equality. So I will explain all the terms here, but the important thing is that on the left, you have orbital integrals as before, and on the right, you have trace of representations. And so here, H, elliptic conjugacy is a subspace of 
the conjugacy classes in H that we can it's a, that are the conjugacy classes in some sense that don't come from smaller quotes. And on the right hand side, you have a set of representations, TL of G. These are the elliptic representations of G. This is not exactly a subset, but we will say it is, of the set of compared representations with exactly the same uh, properties. These are the ones that don't come from smaller groups, in some sense. Here, M pi is the multiplicity of pi in the decomposition of L2 of H, which means that M pi is one if pi is isomorphic to a representation of the form tau tensor tau change and zero otherwise. And we can rewrite that as the dimension of the homomorphism, H equivalent homomorphism from pi to the trivial representation of H. And I won't say what is D pi if it comes from sense, but here is the Artus local trace formula. And there is an another formula I have proven, so following the pioneering work of Walt Berger about spatial orthogonal groups. It's a formula about the situation involved in the gan gauss trois conjecture. So I will consider unitary groups, so I have to fix a quadratic extension of F, and I fix also WN plus one, an emission space of dimension N plus one over E, and WN will be a non-degenerate upper plane in it. Then the situation, we are looking at the following situation, so G will be the product of the unitary groups of WN and WN plus one, and H will be the just the unitary group of WN sitting in the product. By the diagonal embedding, there is an actual inclusion of the unitary group of WN into the unitary group of WN plus one. Then in this case, the decompositions of L2 of X is a consequence of the arish decomposition in the uh, case uh, of uh, H times H. Then you get that, for that's the decomposition. The it is the same, but there is a multiplicity here, M pi, which is that just the dimension of the H equivalent homomorphism from pi to the trivial representation of H. And then starting from here, we can do exactly the same as R2 in some sense, and we get a trace, a local trace formula, which is the following. So here you have the same structure, so the same set of representation on the right, but not the same set of conjugacy classes on the left. The set of conjugacy classes is a little bigger as sorry, than the, the set of elliptic conjugacy classes. Uh, we got It's sitting inside H, modular conjugacy, and it contains the elliptic part. Okay, and in fact, for X in Xi, but not in the elliptic part, I of X and F is not uh, really an orbital integral, but in fact, it's a uh, generalization of it uh, appearing in the work of Arthur. It's a uh, nervariant weighted orbital integral. And as an application of such a theorem, we have the gan gauss trois conjecture for unitary group, which, roughly speaking, describes the representations, the tempered representations of G for which the multiplicity M of pi is non zero in terms of their Langlands parameter. So this was my work so far, and my goal now is first to extend this formula for a group over the real field, because as uh, yeah, it's only true for periodic groups, and after that, uh, 
there are other situations where such formulas can be of some help. For example, there are other uh, conject local conjectures, Gangos Poisson, that have not been solved yet, and I think there should be such a formula in this case too. So I will stop here, and I'm sorry I exceeded my time a little bit. Thank you very much.